Keeping track of stellar sea lion populations is no easy task, but it's critical to ensuring their survival. This animal is one of the largest pinnipeds in the world, with adult males weighing over 2,000 pounds. In the United States, the stellar sea lion is endangered under the Endangered Species Act in the western part of its range, and numbers are continuing to decline in the western half of the Aleutian Islands. Even though this area is remote, it's also home to one of the most productive fisheries in this country. For both to flourish, scientists search for answers as to why this population hasn't recovered. Both the western and eastern populations were once considered threatened, but the eastern population has continually increased and as of 2013 has fully recovered. During this same time period, the western population declined and then stabilized as a whole. But in the western Aleutians, the decline continues and scientists are trying to figure out why. One of the challenges we have with stellar sea lions is that Unlike most large mammals, we still are trying to understand basic life history information. So by marking these animals as pups and then following them through their lives, we're able to collect that type of information. From the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Research vessel Tekla, one team of researchers deploys, often several times a day, to different rookeries and haulouts. These are the reciters, searching for previously marked animals, and depending on the conditions in sight, survey from land or from a small boat. Different prefixes correspond to where these animals were born, and year after year, valuable data starts to illustrate trends, like what percentage of pups survive to adulthood, and how old a female is when it has its first pup. But covering dozens of sites over hundreds of miles in two weeks leaves lots of gaps in the data. Uh, a few years ago, we started putting remote cameras on some of our stellar sea lion haulouts and rookeries. The cameras are put into watertight housings. We sometimes have to build temporary structures to hold the cameras. And they're set to take a photograph every 10 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever interval we need, during daylight hours in perpetuity. So those images hopefully will provide us a couple things. One is that they can give us counts, daily counts, of some of these areas. We're also using the cameras to look for marked sea lions. And some of these animals roam quite a distance, and so we're able to identify those animals including some from uh, the Commander Islands in Russia. To gain another perspective, one of NOAA's Twin Otter aircrafts is dedicated to conducting aerial surveys of the rookeries and haulouts every summer. But most years, this data set is incomplete, because summertime in the Aleutians usually means fog. So one of the new pieces of equipment that we have this year is a unmanned aircraft, a hexacopter, which allows us to be ready to deploy when the fog or the ceiling lifts, something that a clean otter would never be able to do. It also allows us to look at sites that even with researchers in the field of binoculars, we can't see. Some of these sites are very flat, low islands, and there's just no elevation for a person to get an accurate count. And it also allows us to do a lot of the work without disturbing the animals. Some of the sites surveyed with the hexacopter in 2014 had not been photographed from the air since 2008. Together with the remote cameras and continued resite efforts, NOAA Fisheries is working to build long-term population trends, which will aid in developing recovery strategies for this endangered population. Tom and his crew are also partnering with killer whale biologists at NOAA to investigate predation and competition for food. And new tools are continually being designed and implemented like satellite tracking, which is beginning to paint a picture of foraging habits and ranges. The reason that stellar sea lion research or any kind of marine mammal research out here is important is that there's a lot going on out here. Even though it's a rather remote area, Dutch Harbor has the largest number of landings in the United States for fisheries. And stellar sea lions, some of their primary prey is also the primary target of large fisheries in Alaska, things like Pollock and even Atkin mackerel in the western Aleutian Islands. So understanding what stellar sea lions do can help our managers to make wise decisions in regards to fisheries management, as well as knowing where stellar sea lions go, what their habits are, is baseline information that we can use to identify differences over time that might indicate some sort of threat that's affecting the population.